Well, again, good evening. My name is Wyatt Karchner, and I'm with Jason Corbin. And I want to thank you guys again for being here. Uh, with us tonight, uh, we have the DOT. We have Andreas Linden. Uh, he's the District 1 Technical Support Engineer. We have Sherry Hollyfield back here, who's our Project Development Engineer. Gabe Garcia uh, from the NMDOT um, Construction. We have, I think I saw Amy Evans, who's the Public Information Officer. Oh, oh there's Aaron. Aaron Chavarria, who is the District 1 engineer. Um, and then from our design team, uh, there's several people here from Alton Corbin, um, Kayla Smith, uh, Cameron Lozano, Gabe Klein, Jerry Paz, uh, John Montoya, Via Marquez, then we have Orlando um, Hernandez and some folks out, out in the lobby. So, and then last but not least, we have Kurt from Bohannon. Oh, and I missed Harold. I'm sorry, Harold. Harold Love from the DOT and Josh. Yeah, and I don't, I don't think we have any elected officials here tonight. So tonight's meeting, we're going to talk about um, the study process for the this project, which is the I-25. We're also going to talk about the existing conditions, the proposed improvements, our schedule, and the next steps. And then also, the biggest thing we want to do is we want to hear from you. And so to start off, I'm going to talk about our project limits. So this project is actually a bigger project. It doesn't involve just Thorpe Road. So last night we had a public meeting that was for I-25. So on this project, we are studying I-25 from the Loman Interchange north through US-70 all the way to the Doña Ana Interchange. And then we've included Thorpe Road as part of that study. And our study limits on Thorpe Road are from Barella to Del Rey. And those of you that are familiar with this area, um, we'll get into more details on the existing conditions on that, but those are the limits of this project. Um, for the study process, as part of our planning and scoping process to justify funding for future infrastructure investments, we are following our study procedure guidelines. And the way it is, we are going out as NMDOT, we are hiring engineering consultant firms like Bohemian and Houston on their team to come in and create a report. And that report is called the Phase A B report. We have Phase A is a determination, a collection of data to describe the existing condition. And Phase B is the evaluation of alternatives, how to improve and make a corridor safer. So currently, we are in that process. Phase A has been completed. Um, Wyman's team went ahead and collected the data, evaluated it, ran through models, um, identified need, and, and he's going to talk about this a little bit further. And now we're coming in front of the public. We wanted to show you this is what we found. What are the expectations? Um, we've seen a growing population in our area, but we also seen a need for the build up of a freight network, you know, with throughout the southern border region, um, all the way from Santa Teresa, you know, tying into the I-25 corridor. So all this is taken into consideration. And today we are here to show you our ideas from alternatives. We're collecting your input because we this is our community, right? We live here. You know, we want to know if what we are proposing as engineers is actually as needed. Our, our needs. Um, that was all brought together. We're going to sit down, evaluate it, and come up as a preferred alternative. Um, that preferred alternative is then evaluated from the standpoint. What that means, we're doing cultural resources, um, making sure uh, we don't use federal or state funds to uh, negatively impact any historical values or create a social economic negative. Um, in our area, what we anticipate is actually um, a PCE, what is a category of exclusion. That means we will see there's a lot of undisturbed area here in the, the areas that will be impacted by this phase of the project. You know, there, there's no big concern. Um, however, during phase 1C, we're going to have a preferred alternative, we evaluate, we will come back. So that's the next step where we come back to the community and you know, we're going to make it sure what we're proposing as the engineering team through um, 
the NFUT, we are not impacting negatively our community. And then after that is completed, uh, we go into a preliminary design. And, and Vlad, you're going to probably speak a little bit about that timeline. Um, but what you guys are going to see is this is a study for us to justify investments. Uh, we have to go out, we have to find the data, we have to analyze it. And then when it warrants, we can go in front of um, the state legislative, also federal programs, and ask for allocating funding to these improvements. Are they warranted? Are they justified? You know, as you all know, um, the need for infrastructure improvements throughout the nation is humongous, and there's not enough money to do it all. So we have to prioritize, and that is kind of what's going to happen here too. Why is talk a little bit about I-25 and safety concerns that have to be addressed first? We talk about a little bit of congestion relief, a form of angler, the angler overpass, what they're proposing there, you know, and then. Um, we're looking into Thorpe Road, New Mexico 320. And truly, what you guys have to understand, for us as the NFBOT, what we can do within our right away, our property, is very limited. So we're truly looking into a partnership with the county to come to an alternative that actually serves all of us in the best form of fashion is the right investment. So if you think about it, if you have your house and you want to build an addition, and the addition would actually reach into your neighbor's property, or you better have to have a good agreement and coordination with your neighbor, otherwise it wouldn't work, right? So that is kind of the, the situation we're in here. Um, I think from here, why you can actually go into the evaluation okay. process. Okay. Thank you, Andreas. So as, as we mentioned, our study wasn't just focused on New Mexico 320, it was also focused on I-25. And all of you guys that are in this area know I-25 pretty well, I'm sure. And so the blue segment here is the segment of I-25 between Lowman and US-70. And then we went from US-70 to the Doni Ann interchange. And I'm going to quickly go through some of the um, alternatives that we had for that and some of the existing conditions on that. I'm not going to go into full detail on any of that. We do have the public meeting from last night that you can go to our website and, and watch if you want to. Um, just for the sake of time and, and for you guys, we really want to focus on, on Thorpe Road tonight. So I-25 South, which is that stretch between US-70 and uh, Loman, um, has two lanes in each direction um, with narrow inside shoulders and that cable barrier. That's the heaviest used stretch of I-25 uh, on in the entire city of Las Cruces. There's over 35,000 vehicles a day that use that stretch. And we all know, especially in the peak hour um, in the morning, that Loman Interchange tends to back up. And so we're looking at ways that we can improve that. As we continue north, um, I-25, the traffic volume drops. It's basically it's drops to about 15,000 vehicles a day. Um, but again, there's some improvements that need to be made. Um, the shoulders are a little too steep. There's some guardrail improvements that need to be done as well. And then the other thing that Andreas mentioned is there's the Engler um, grade separation, which connects Elks and Del Rey. Um, that, that bridge, um, we've studied to see if we can put an, an interchange there, so on and off ramps um, to get onto the interstate. <clears throat> and so our recommendations from, for those pieces, so for the piece of I-25 from Loman to US-70 is we're recommending to add a lane in each direction on the interstate. So it would essentially look like the piece of I-25 from Loman to University with three lanes in each direction and uh, the concrete wall barrier in the middle. For the stretch of I-25 from, from Loman to the Doña Ana interchange, We're recommending just a no build plus option. So basically we're gonna just fix some of the things that are out there that are need improved. So we're gonna have the slopes are gonna need to be fixed, um, rehab the pavement, flatten the shoulders, um, add some acceleration and deceleration lanes, but no, no additional lanes would be added on that piece. And then at Engler, we're recommending um, interchange ramps. So we'll, a full diamond interchange would be at that location. Um, will probably be a signalized inter interchange um, so that people could easily get on and off. So now the piece that I'm going to talk about and spend most of our evening on is Thorpe Road. So again, our study limits start at Delray, and they proceed 
to uh, the west all the way to Barella. And so I'm going to go through, as you guys know, um, Thorpe Road is very diverse within this corridor. We have the segment that's closer to the interstate that's very commercial. We have the gas stations and the convenience stores there. And then as we proceed further to the west, it becomes more of that um, residential neighborhood. And so there's very different characteristics throughout this. And so for that first piece from Del Rey to Joe Gutierrez, there's, there's two lanes, one in each direction with the left turn lane. So there's left turn lanes into the gas station. There's left turn lanes to allow you access onto the interstate. Um, and then there's, in that segment, there's curb and gutter and sidewalk. The one big thing that I think we, we all know and we've heard some people tonight talk about is the need for some better control at the interchange and um, entrance into the gas stations and to El Camino Real. There's those two left turns that are really close and so that can often back up. Um, and then when we look at it from an engineering standpoint, um, we're following the state access management manual. So those are some of the guidelines that we have to follow. And this intersection spacing, this access spacing doesn't meet the criteria within that. And so from an engineering perspective, um, we don't like it, just to be frank with you. Um, but we also have heard from some folks in the community that it's not great for you as well. And so that's one of the things that we're going to look to improve um, with the alternatives and the things that we'll discuss today. As we continue to the, to the west from Joga Terrace to Venegas, um, the DOT has, has done some improvements. So there's, again, there's sidewalk, there's the drainage swells that are on both sides that capture some of the drainage. But the road just has two lanes in each direction. It doesn't have a middle turn lane. So if you're going to go to Dollar General or O'Reilly's or any of those places, you, you have to sit in the lane to turn left. And so that can cause traffic to back up a little bit as well. And so um, within that segment, there also is sidewalks um, that have been in installed. And you can see from the photo here that the driveways into these businesses are pretty well defined. So you know as a driver where exactly you need to turn. There's no guessing as to where somebody's going to be coming in or out of that driveway um, for the most part. And so from, a, from an engineering perspective, we like that. We like predictability. We like those kind of things. So um, that's one of the things that from, a, from our perspective, we like to implement what we call access control and driver driveway spacing, um, si similar to what's here, just because it makes it a safer place for everybody. <clears throat> As we continue to the west, um, the, the piece of road of Thorpe between Venegas and Barella, this is where things start to change. We go from that kind of commercial district that's by the interstate to a more residential. It goes into the historic Doniana village. And the biggest thing is the right-of-way changes. So closer to the interstate, we have close to 100 feet of right-of-way. And then as we get closer to Barella, that right-of-way shrinks down to about 50 feet. And so that really kind of limits our options of improvements unless we go and buy right-of-way from people. And we all know that a lot of those houses and a lot of those properties, they have houses or other infrastructure that's really kind of close to the road. And so, um, We've kept that in mind as we develop these alternatives, and we'll go through those a little bit more in detail as we go through here. But again, this kind of transitions completely into an, a rural section. There's no sidewalk um, throughout any of this corridor through this section. Um, the pavement condition on Thorpe, um, the DOT did do some improvements on Thorpe recently, but the remaining portions of Thorpe do need some improvements on the pavement. And so that's something that we've noted in the study. And then drainage. Um, I think one of the big concerns that a lot of people have is the drainage on Thorpe, especially um, between Abieta and Dusty Lane. Um, we have that low water crossing where, where all of the water comes down parallel to the roadway and then it crosses over the road. And so that's one of the conditions that we've, we've identified and we're looking for ways to improve that just for safety perspective and, and just to get her out of the road, allow for when, when things are happening, when it's raining, the, that you guys can still have access to the community. And then, of course, um, as you guys drive this corridor every day, I'm sure you see the utilities that are out there. And so those are other things that we'll have to contend with in the design. Um, we'll do utility coordination and make sure that if any upgrades are needed by any of these utility companies, that they will be done at the same time. <clears throat> so if we look at the, the traffic volumes, um, on this stretch of Thorpe, they vary quite a bit. 
So on that western end by Barella and through the church and that historic area, traffic volume's a little lower as we could expect. So we have about 4,000 vehicles a day there. As we get closer to the interstate itself, that jumps up to about 8,000 vehicles. And so um, just by, based on that, we can kind of see on this next one where the crashes occur. And I think the one I want to highlight for you is El Camino Real, where there's 18 crashes in the last five years at that location. And so from our perspective, we, that raises an alarm. That, that number sticks out compared to these others. We also see that the, the on-ramp, northbound on-ramp, has several accidents, and then also at Ledesma. And so we're taking that data into consideration and trying to figure out what is the cause for those crashes. Is it the congestion? Is it geometry related? Is it driver error? What, what are those things? And so those are all things that we're looking at. Um, but the ones that stick out and have lots of crashes, um, those are ones where we think improvements need to be done a little bit more. <clears throat> so, start of, so part of the uh, location study process is to develop a purpose and need statement. And so you guys can read the purpose and need statement here that we've developed for this project. Um, it says the purpose of the study is to improve safety, accommodate growth within the region, address physical deficiencies such as pavement, drainage, and ADA, roadway geometry, access control, and multimodal connectivity. Um, and Andreas kind of touched on this, but as part of this project, we're also doing, and it's not, not in this phase, but in the next phase, we will do what is called the environmental process. And that is the National Environmental um, Protection Act is what we're gonna be following. And you can see some of the things that we'll, we'll follow as part of this. We'll look at water resources and wetlands, historic and cultural, resources, which is going to be a big deal because here in Doniana, we do have that historic village of Doniana and the historic district here, and so we're going to keep that in mind. <clears throat> and then we'll do other studies, such as a biological study to make sure there's no endangered species in the area. And then we'll look at air quality, visual resources, and things like that. So, and then one of the big things, and one of the reasons why we're here tonight, is for community input. And so one of the, we've actually received um, this survey, which I guess was done by the Doniana Village Association. Um, and so we've taken that input that we've received from that survey into consideration. And I'll get into that a little bit in more detail um, as we go on. It's kind of how some of these um, pri priorities that were given to us by this organization align with what we, we are recommending tonight. <clears throat> So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the alternatives that we've looked at. And I'm gonna split them into two different categories. So first we're gonna look at the alternatives to improve Thorpe Road as a whole. And then we're gonna look at alternatives to improve the intersection of El Camino Real. So I'm gonna start with Thorpe Road. And with any process that we do um, in this study is we have to look at the no build. Um, we have to make sure that as, as Andreas mentioned, that improvements are justified and needed. And so every, um, every time we do a study, the first alternative that we look at is the do nothing option or no build. And so that's exactly what that is. No improvements would be made. Everything would be left as is. Of course, the DOT is not gonna walk away from it and not do any maintenance, but we're not gonna add lanes, sidewalk, curb and gutter, bike lanes, anything like that. So that's option A. Alternative B, is the two lane uh, option with a drainage swell. And so you can see here, we would have one lane in each direction. And then we're showing here that we would have a raised median in the middle. And this is more to just show you that we're, we're thinking of that access control. We wanna control where driveways are, especially in that more commercial district. Um, and then we wanna help in that residential area to um, make sure that those access points are more defined. So it's safer for all drivers. And then in here, we've kind of mirrored what's um, gone on through the, throughout the, the, the northern section. So we have the sidewalk that's out by the edge of the right-of-way, and then that ditch um, along between the roadway and the right-of-way. And we also have a shoulder here. Um, we've called it a shoulder, um, but really it's a paved surface. Um, I know we've had some conversations tonight about the want and the desire for a bike lane. I think that's something that as we move forward, we could refine this alternative to maybe classify it as a bike lane or, or sign it as a shared use or something like that. So um, that's generally what that would look like. And then if I want to show it to you on a plan view as to what that would look like. So you can see here, um, this is near uh, Ledesma Street. Um, you can see what we would have is we would have left turn bays for 
for people that want to access some of these streets. Um, and the big thing about this alternative is that we're being a little bit flexible with it. In as we get to the re residential area, we would we don't need these the left turn lanes anymore, and so we would kind of eliminate that and try to accommodate that with the right of way. The next option that we're looking at is very similar, except for we add a lane. We add one lane in each direction, so we'd have a total of four lanes, two in each direction. We'd have the drainage swell and then the sidewalk. Um, we would also try to implement access control, and that's still going to be a big theme with all of these alternatives is access control. And then you can see what that would look like. This alternative does work in the commercial area without any right-of-way acquisition. But again, as we proceed further to the west, you can see even on this image that's on the screen that we're starting to encroach into um, right-of-way acquisition needs. And then again, um, we looked at another option here, which is very similar, two lanes in each direction, but we added a bicycle lane, a buffered bicycle lane. Um, this one would also require a storm drain system. So we'd have to put pipes and drop inlets in the, in the street to capture the storm drain and then carry it to a pond or something like that. And so we would also have sidewalks that are separated away from the roadway. Again, you can see here that, again, that's going to start to require some right-of-way acquisition in some of these areas as we get further around, uh, further to the west. And then the final alternative that we looked at from a roadway perspective is alternative E, which has four lanes, two in each direction, and then we incorporated a multi-use trail on one side. Um, again, it's very similar to the other alternative. It does, again, require right-of-way, um, and then it does have the, the two lanes in each direction. So the next thing I'm going to look at is the alternatives for the El Camino Real, Elks, that whole intersection that goes on kind of behind the gas station there. <clears throat> so again, the first one we're looking at is the no build, which nothing would change. And then we started to look at ways to improve it. And so some of the, the themes that you'll see throughout all of these alternatives is we're trying to increase the separation from, let me see if I can point it out here on the screen, from the I-25 southbound ramps, which are here, and the entrance to El Camino Real, and these two gas stations, and all of these other businesses here. So you can see with this alternative, we've actually pushed that intersection further to the west to gain that separation. Um, we've created access points for the gas stations that are um, off of that intersection, so they don't have their own dedicated access points. And then you can see El Camino Real, Joe Gutierrez, and Elks all would come together into a single intersection located here, which would be stop controlled. Um, we would have stop signs in all four, location, four directions, so it would be a four-way stop for people to go through here. Again, as Andreas mentioned, a lot of these alternatives are gonna, allow, are gonna require a lot of partnerships. So this one's gonna have uh, a partnership with not only the county because of Elks, El Camino Real, and Joe Gutierrez are all county roads, but also with EBID because the drain outfall from the, pond, from the dam that's across the interstate goes through here. And so, again, those kind of coordination and partnership efforts would, are going to take place um, with any of these alternatives. I'm going to quickly go through some of these alternatives for the roundabout. Um, we did look at four roundabout options, and you guys can look at them in the back. We did have some concerns with them from a spacing standpoint. So in the future, we expect that a signal may be required at the interchange on and off ramps. And if you're stopped at a red light and you're starting to back up behind other people, a roundabout is going to start to fail when you can't have that free flowing movement. And so I'm going to show you quickly four roundabout alternatives. But because of that potential failure, we didn't really see them in too much detail. So there's alternative C, which has one roundabout. Alternative D, we pushed it a little bit further to the west, but still we had some concerns with that spacing. And then we looked at another one. We didn't have a roundabout on Thorpe itself, but off of Thorpe where El Camino Real, Elks, and Joe Gutierrez come together. And then finally, we looked at another roundabout option. But again, you can see that this didn't move El Camino Real anyway, um, away from the intersection. So this was an alternative that we didn't really study in too much detail. 
So the ones that we kind of gave a little, that presented a little bit more promise um, was alternative G. So you can see here, this is a simplified uh, T intersection. It moves the intersection with uh, El Camino Real further to the west, and it changes the access points um, for the gas station and, Ch and Chachis um, to be off of the new Elks realignment. We also fix um, the curve here between Elks and El Camino Real. And then one of the bigger things that we did with this alternative is we put a cul-de-sac on Joga Terrace. Um, it's not a very heavily used road. There's another access off of Ledesma that you can get through here. And so um, we thought this would be a, a viable option to help eliminate some of those access points along Thorpe was to cul-de-sac it here. As we go through this next alternative, again, it's very similar. It's a T intersection, but we've moved that intersection with El Camino Real and Elks and Thorpe, again, further to the west. Essentially, it would be over where the old gas or the old car wash was. That's where we would align that. Um, again, Joga Terrace is cul de sac and then we have improvements to the access to both of the, the gas stations and the, and the commercial districts. And then the, the final alternative that we looked at is alternative I. And this one, from a driver, from a driver perspective, from an engineer perspective, this one's like, wow, this is perfect, um, because it creates that separation. We want that separation between the interchange ramps and that ma first major intersection, which would be Elks and Gutierrez. Um, we still provide a smaller access point for both Chachis and the gas station, and then the other gas station and convenience stores on the north side. But the heavy movements, which are people off of Elks and El Camino Real, get pushed further away from that intersection. It does require, again, some right-of-way acquisition here. Um, and then we also are able to connect um, Joga Terrace and El Camino Real in here. And it's really from a ge geometric perspective, this one is the one that, that kind of jumps out as us, as engineers, as something that, that we really like. Um, but we realize that it is a big difference from what people see tonight. And so we want to hear back from you. This, yes, it would align with Venegas. Yes, yep. So this, this is the Venegas intersection. I'm pointing at my screen, not your screen. So Venegas is this intersection here. What is that street right here? This one, this is Venegas. further. So the, the gas stations here, um, the Circle K, here's Chachi's, um, and then here's the trailer park. Um, I believe this is O'Reilly's right here, and then Venegas. So would you see, earlier you told us there was a lot of access on the That's something we can look at and, and make sure. Again, we're, we're just in the study phase, and so this is the, the kind of feedback we want from you guys. And if, if I could just so we can get through this and then we'll open it up for questions. I don't, I, I don't want to get too far off track, but I, don't, I sure want to hear from everybody. So please, please don't hesitate. <clears throat> so once we looked at all of the alternatives, we do what we call an evaluation of those alternatives. And we look at them from, um, various standpoints. So the, obviously the top priority for us is safety. And then we look at traffic operations, geometric compliance, driver expectation, constructability, environmental, drainage. And then on Thorpe, some of those alternatives, as you saw, would take right away. And so we wanted to make sure and take that into consideration um, as well. And so with our evaluation matrix for the typical sections or what the roadway of Thorpe would be configured like, the recommended alternative at this point is the two-lane option. It would have one lane in each direction. We would implement access control. Um, we would put sidewalks on both sides of the roadway throughout the project limits and then do drainage improvements as well. And then as we look at the intersection of El Camino Real, 
Um, the, the recommended alternative for that is the alternative I, which again pushes that intersection to Ledesma and kind of cleans up that whole area near the gas stations and creates the separation that's more in conformance with the state access management manual policies. Um, and, we'll, and then again, as, we'll, as we talked about, we'll look at some of the other concerns that you had um, as if this ad advances a little bit further. <clears throat> and so what I want to do now is just kind of quickly walk you through what this entire corridor would look like. It's for those of you that have been here earlier and looked around, it's the same map that's back on the wall back there, um, but just kind of to describe it to you step by step. So we're going to start at the, the Del Rey side. So let me see if I can get my mouse over here. So here is the intersection of, of Del Rey and Thorpe. And so we would add sidewalks um, throughout this entire stretch. Um, we would widen the roadway to include left turn lines. And then as we get to the intersection, where's my little mess? With the northbound off ramps, um, one of the things that we're doing right now is we're doing a, what we call a signal warrant. So we're counting cars out there to determine if there is a traffic volume and turning movements that warrant adding a traffic signal at that location. And so I don't have that information available yet, but by the time we get and meet with you again, um, we will have that information. And so the stretch underneath the bridge, um, that's gonna remain very similar, one lane in each direction with those left turn lanes. And then as we approach um, the two gas stations, which are here, um, we still do provide access to them, full access, um, but it's, it's limited significantly from what it was previously um, because that Elks, El Camino Real intersection is moved. And again, we're moving the Ledesma or the, the El Camino Real intersection to be aligned with Ledesma. I don't know why I can't keep this thing over here. To Venegas, I'm sorry, Venegas. And then you can see, again, we have the left turn bays into some of these commercial businesses and then as we go further to the west, we start to narrow it down. We, we realize that right away is something that we don't want to take um, throughout this stretch because it would impact a lot of homes and, and the, the characteristics of that roadway change. And so we're narrowing it down, we're dropping that, that median completely. Um, the, drainage on, the drainage swells on both sides tend to narrow and we're doing everything we can to try to stay within the right of way here. Um, but we're going to also try to, this improvement, um, do some access control with the driveways. And, and as things advance, we'll be back. Um, we'll work with each individual property owner to meet with them on their driveway to make sure that it provides access that's adequate to them, um, but try to fit it within the guidelines that we can from an engineering perspective. And so um, what I want to do now is kind of look at the priorities that we found from the, from the Doniana Village Association survey and show you how what we've recommended kind of aligns with that. So the first thing that kind of popped out to us was the complete streets, sidewalks, pedestrian access. Um, and so we've, we've tried to incorporate that. So we have the sidewalks on both sides. We have that wider shoulder, which could be potentially a bike lane or a shared use. Um, and then, <clears throat> The next thing is the two-lane roadway. And so, again, our alternative, as you can see below, keeps it as that two-lane roadway. We do widen it in that commercial district that we saw, um, for left turn lanes. Um, but then the other thing that we saw in here was the El Camino Real gas station access was a concern. And so by pushing that further to Venegas, that does help with that. And then something that um, was on here a couple of times was the beautification, the landscaping, and, and some of this historic signing. And that's something that from a study perspective, we don't really look at in great detail. It's something as we advance more into design, those things could be considered. Um, and we would wanna have a partnership again with the county, with the village, um, just so that those things could be maintained and beautification could be done. And so what are our next steps? So the biggest thing is we're here tonight. We wanna to gather information. We wanna hear from you. We want you to tell us what you like, what you don't like, what you wish we would have done, what we missed. Um, you guys live here. We, we're from this community, but we aren't on this corridor every single day like you all are. And then once we hear from you, um, we may change our recommendations. Um, and every report that I've written in my 15 years, I've learned something from the public. 
that's altered our decisions slightly in some way. And so keep that in mind is this is your community and we want to do things that fit within engineering guidelines, but also fit the users. And then um, while things for this project don't have funding for design and construction, those would be the next steps. The project would go into design, right away acquisition would be done if that's how things are proceeded, and then construction would happen. So we anticipate that the final phase AB report would be done in the summer. Um, as, we, as I mentioned earlier, um, this project is large, so it doesn't just include Thorpe. Um, so the first priority that the DOT has is a stretch of I-25 from Loman to US-70. And so we're going to start the design of that. Um, and there's no construction funding identified for that yet, but they want to get that started as, as a design process. Um, and then also the design of the Engler interchange. That'll help several things throughout the community, um, relieve some congestion on other local streets, and then just provide another access point. And so at this point, um, I'm going to ask you guys to have questions and comments if you would. What I'm going to do is I'll bring the mic to you, and I would ask just for our records if you guys could state your name. That way we can have documentation, and then every, and I'll give you the mic so the people that are online can hear as well. Uh, my name is Israel Chavez. I'm uh, the president of the board for the Doniana Village Association. We did the survey that included over 300 responses. Um, I'm glad that you picked out a couple of things from the survey, but I, there were several other things um, that I didn't include that I can include, but some of the things that came up were um, the, the intersection at Ledesma. Um, that does have multiple access points, um, and so we would hope that this project also alleviate some of the congestion there. But um, one of the things that I noticed is, is that um, the, while it does have some pedestrian uh, uh, infrastructure, um, one of the priorities of the, uh, of the community that, uh, that I've heard is uh, calming tools, right? So not just pedestrian access on either side, but pedestrian priority at several points. Um, the village is reaching its 200th year. And this is the most significant infrastructure investment that the state is going to make in the last maybe 60. And so um, with respect to how this, how this infrastructure is going to go, um, not only do we want pedestrians to be thought of, but we want it to be priority. And uh, the federal DOT has several has lots of information on the complete streets. Is this working? Okay. Um, and and I, I don't want it to just be that we said sidewalks. We didn't use the word sidewalks, right? We use the word multi-use paths because several DOT engineers that I spoke to said say uh, uh, multi-use paths. They 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 become much more substantial. So we don't want just the bare minimum. And we don't want this to be, because what I saw from clearly your favorite, which is the last one, um, what I heard was the other ones didn't get as much favorable treatment as the last one that you presented, was that it creates still a very fast uh, 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 way from I-25 to Valley. And so really what we want is calming effects so that folks, when they are getting off of I-25, they're not getting as quickly from I-25 to Valley because um, this, from our perspective, this project is about the people who live in this corridor, and we ha we've had several of uh, projects where or programs where youth are crossing this road. And so, if you're creating a fast corridor, which is what I see in alternative I, it's not what I see in alternative E, it's not what I see in alternative F, then I I'm, I'm concerned that, that it's going to create still a corridor where we're not seeing calming effects. Right, and that doesn't just mean speed limits. That means cross hawks. That means I know that you said that the beautification aspect's not something you think about now, but even even like pedestrian dedicated infrastructure, that's not just sidewalks on either side. Because we have to get to both sides. There's a post office on one side, and there's a community center on the other. There are carnicerias on one side, and there's a plaza on the other. So the the infrastructure not only has to be on the sides of the road, but through the road. And, and, and dedicated to pedestrian access so that we can get across. Okay. So from a traffic calming, or from a complete street standpoint, that is something that we, we have considered. 
Um, and we actually received the survey from you guys. I think you actually just published the results of it in the last month, probably, because that's when we saw it. And so um, I think we, we saw that after some of our results, or after we'd written the report. And but, so, but, but to be clear, I emailed Trent several times asking for updates on this, and nobody, and I didn't, and, and DOT promised that we would get us an email about it. We didn't, we only got it from Susie. So, DO, so, so don't pretend that you didn't get it, because I told Trent to let me know when this meeting was happening, and he didn't. And I, and I let him know that we had a survey. Okay, so let me, let me answer your but question. to be clear, don't, don't make it seem like we sprung the survey on you, because I asked the Deputy Secretary to email me when this was happening, and we hosted a meeting in the community with him. Okay. So we've had this, this survey coming. And, and we really appreciate the concern and the input. Um, I want to remember or remind everybody, if you look at the study area and the area of New Mexico 320, that we are evaluating tonight with your input that is appreciated. It is a very segmented, and the area we're talking about, the relocation of the interchange or intersection is really not a residential area. It is more a commercial, has a commercial nature, you know, and that's where we come in, that's where we come in later to the village, you know, where it's very close to the existing, and we really understand and we really appreciate your input you know, tonight is the, the right platform for us to have this discussion. You know, so taking in your, the report is not completed. Right, and you've had, and, and yeah. I did provide and the results exactly. of the surveys and, and for several survey weeks will before take in, will be taken in consideration, so thank you. The implication no, in this comment was that I sprung the survey results on him. In that, the past. That, no, that's not even what he said. He said that we are received as a study team the input and we will take the input in consideration to complete the report. That, that is what's happening here. There is not, we didn't see it, no. This is the time, this is the right moment in the process to have this discussion. You know, so that, that's all I want to point out. Yeah. And so from a, from a complete street standpoint, um, the medians do provide some of that traffic calming. So it provides a place for not only plantings to be done potentially. Um, if you drive down some of the streets in Las Cruces that have medians with plantings, you tend to want to slow down a little bit. Um, it can make you feel a little bit claustrophobic, if you will. And so by adding those medians in that more commercial district, if you will, that could allow for a potential for some of those traffic calming devices, such as plantings, um, to be implemented. And as far as crosswalks and things like that, we would we encourage you guys to provide us with some locations and input as to where where those would be beneficial to to the residents. Because we, we realize that at the intersections at the interstate, that may not be where people are crossing because all the homes are further to the west. And so that's the kind of feedback that we want to hear from you guys is where would it be beneficial um, for us to put in some sort of pedestrian infrastructure to potentially cross the street um, so that it is safe for pedestrians, it's safe for drivers. And so drivers can expect to see where a pedestrian can cross and make sure that, that they do it in a safe manner. And so the, the, I would encourage you to, to continue to talk to us and even write down your comments or, I, I mean, I would gladly meet with you just so that we would have a good understanding of what that kind of infrastructure is that you're looking for and where it would be beneficial to the village itself. My name is Rod Blanchard and I'm a, a community member. Um, my biggest concern is semis going from Interstate 25 down to Valley Drive. You get past Ledesma and the road significantly narrows. There's bridges that are very narrow. And there's, there's, when you get past Doniana Road, there's a big C curve there. The semis cannot handle that curve. Cars literally have to stop and let them get through that, and they don't stay on the road going around that curve. It's very dangerous. And somehow that needs to either stop or there needs to be real strong incentive to make them go someplace else instead of through there. And 
So uh, my question is, is anything, can anything be done with that? Or if not, is there anything that can be done to discourage that? road and it's hard for you but we've been I've been asking this question for 20 years and nothing has been done and I know I admire the stuff that you're doing the surveys and coming over here it's very much appreciated the thing is who do I contact with the county or who, who do I talk to who, who can I write to about this road is not for semis, okay? It's a state road, but say when it was first built, that road, Tharp, and it, it was not Tharp, it was just a county road. There was no semis, but we're having to deal with that traffic. It's gross. The road is... From there to here. So if you can find a way for me to contact somebody on this, because I brought it up to senators, I brought it up to a lot of people, and nothing is being done. All they tell me is that they don't have any say so because it's a state road. Well, I'm a New Mexico taxpayer, and I, I think we deserve it. Thank you. Can you please state your name so we have you on record? State your name. Your name. My name is Priscilla Blanchard. Um, but before we go to the next question, first of all, thank you so much, Priscilla. And one thing, so for example, this is my neighborhood too. I literally, I, I walked to the meeting tonight. You know, so so I'm. I do completely understand you know, where our concerns come from living here as residents in this corridor. Um, reaching out to our representatives as, as, a, as a citizen is, is always, it's, it's our voice. It's our voice and the letters that we send, they have value in form of when we go out and we look for funding sources to build improvements, to build a better environment for us, without the support of our legislators, it nothing. Twenty years and nothing happens because the money is not given to us. Right? We can we can draw the, the most beautiful pictures and call in designs, but if we cannot find funding to bring our plans to life, that's all they are. It's an idea. So. Thank you so much for bringing this up because I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about and having that mixed now with the growth in population, with the growth in freight. You know, we're seeing it all over our district. Freight is becoming, and, and that, that's why we're here. We're trying to understand and we're trying to find the right compromise that we can justify receiving the funding to make these improvements. You know, so thank you very much for your comment tonight. And, and we're definitely going to you know, start looking into it. And if this is not the right project, at least we're, we're putting it on the list to look into the future development. Thank you very much. Um, that was the next question. Hi. Uh, my name is Selena Corral, and I do youth organizing with uh, Doñana Village Association. There's um, several things that I saw on your maps, and it's a little more literal. Um, you did say that Alternative G was one of the best alternatives that you could find. You're blocking Joe Gutierrez Street. Um, personally, with the activities that we do with the youth and all the bike and walking we do, crossing streets, and do see the need for crosswalks. We already have the proof for that. We also have pictures, if that's what you want. Um, because we've been documenting this specifically to the, for this reason, right? Like, for when you ask us for proof, we're like, here it is. Um, you're blocking Joe Gutierrez right there on G and H. Um, Really, I see there's a preference for cars, like drastically right there by, rock, by walking that street, because if you're riding your bicycle, going through Joe Gutierrez to get to where it's the community center and the plaza or the church or whatever areas right there, that is like the safest route for any biker or walker, even kids, right? Like you always see kids playing around that area. I mean, maybe instead of blocking it, it'd be a better alternative to make it just 
a pedestrian route and bikers route instead of like, you know, can block it for cars, but leave it open for people that walk and use bicycles or even a stroller, right? Like people are trying to get through with their babies. Um, also, um, on the crosswalks, you were asking the question about which intersections. I feel like it's very clear, especially on your study, right? Where you're seeing where the crashes are at. It's like there's obviously a need for a crosswalk on Ledesma streets. And we can say that five or ten times. It's on your studies. It's on our pictures and our studies. Um, people want to cross. They want to get to Mick Market and they want to get to their house, right? Like they want to eat and they want to put gas. So, Besides that other one, right, like it's where the family dollar's at and you see all those other like the gas stations and there's houses right in front of the family dollar. So there's obvious need for a crosswalk there as well, right? A crosswalk would also provide for the slowing of the traffic, right, that you're commenting. I personally, I don't get really intrigued when I see a plant on the side of the road. It doesn't make me want to stop. Um, but a crosswalk does, right? Like even if I get frustrated, if I'm driving my car, I'm going to stop and that walk stop because I know there's somebody that's about to cross. Um, that also allows for youth in the community who you don't see outside playing, right? There's a reason for that. They don't have any standards. Like you go outside and you have to constantly be watching for a car. There's no, there's nothing that tells you to, that you feel safe in this cross, in this like community as a person that's a youth that wants to just go about their community, maybe visit their grandparents at the other side of the road. They can't even do that. Why? Because Mary, their, their parents are busy and they can go along walking the street because there's a car or a semi that will be getting on their way, right? Um, we do have pictures to prove all of these walkings. We've documented all of these things uh, with several youth involved, right? Like we even have like some teenagers that help us stop the traffic so that people can be crossing safely because they want this to happen, right? You have a lot of people in this community that have family on each side of the road and they just don't, don't do the walk because they're going to, they have to do it on a car, but they don't have a car. There's like a lot of things, right? Like we are sure that this community is built upon cars. People think about cars. What is the best ideal for car? How do we sell more cars? But not everyone can afford a car. A lot of the people in this community don't have a car, right? I mean, you even see the people that are on their wheelchairs. How are they getting by? Do you wonder how many people are in their wheelchairs in this community? No, because you don't see them outside, right? They don't have the space to be commuting. And these are the things that this community needs uh, besides like, oh, let's do a really pretty sidewalk, right? Like, it's like, it's not about that. It's really about getting involved in your community. Why is there like, how can you bring more economy to this community? Make it more walkable, like that people can actually go to these places and support the local produce, right? And then they get in and like, they get um, motivated to create more local produce. So it's like, I feel like it goes beyond, right? Like a roundabout that maybe wasn't studied that well, because I think that the roundabouts over there were really, really motivating. But then when you're talking about them and you say that um, you're just showing us this, but there's not like enough um, proof, right? To be like, yeah, we can do this. Right? It's like, oh, that actually looked pretty cool. But it's like the part of your study that is the less probable, right? So it's like, I feel like there needs to be more reality to that check of where is the person walking? How can we make it safe? Even if it's a five-year-old, right? Like that it's like lost in the hood, right? So it's like, we need to think about these things. And, and I feel like that's part of why like the frustration comes from, right? That it's like, you don't see anyone walking in your study. Why is there not a pedestrian drawn on these studies? You only see cars drawn. Like even that idea, right? Like even visualize it on the image. And um, yeah, sorry, thanks. Okay. Did, did we get your name? Yes, you did. Okay, thank you so much. Um, so, um, thank you. This was a very big picture for us as Doniana Village, as a community. Let me, let me try to, for us, we are here today as the NMDOT and the corridor of Thorpe, that's, that's the only restriction that we have. What you brought a lot of wonderful things that how to grow a community, but that growth has to come within the county, within, I don't know, are we incorporated as a village yet or not? No. You know, so, 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 it is, so it is the county, right, where, where these inner, internal walking paths, bike paths, you know, that, so this, what, what I'm getting at tonight, we, 
you you are you are absolutely. You, oh, but you're, I did make li literal suggestions, right? Like yes. for example, the idea of Joe Gutierrez getting blocked and absolutely. and the the mind change of like you know, from no, focus car focus to to like community focus, right? Yeah. No, absolutely. And I I really appreciate you doing this, and and thank you for letting. Thank you for sharing. You know, um, and again, and that is when we look at this study and how to build this project, this is pushed the furthest out because we understand this coordination that you bring in up, it takes a lot of time. You know, that if it's not something where we can decide within our right way, within our property, oh, we're gonna make this change, right? Joe Gutierrez is not even a state route. We have no say over what happens to it. This is an idea, this is an idea that we're proposing to the community, that we're proposing to our partners, EBID, the county, yeah, yeah. and then from there on we go to future meetings, right? Mm -hmm. So th this is this is step one. Like 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 I, I told you, this is the, this is awesome. This is thank you so much for being here and bringing this because without this type of input, this is not set in stone, not at all. Yeah, this is a piece of paper today. You know, but without the right players coming to the table that have the authority to make changes, the NMDOT, we ourselves, we are limited to the Thorpe Corridor. That's just, I just want to be open and transparent on that. Thank you so much. Um, do we have? Hi, Andres. Uh, thank you so much for coming. And I'm glad that we have someone who's local to our community who's actually invested um, as you live here. You didn't cross Thorpe, though, to come this way, did you? <laughs> No, I didn't think so. I didn't think so. That, and that, again, is because crossing Thorpe is really hard. As someone who grew up in this community and has children in this community, I just really want to echo the fact that we need walkable. Um, if we're going to improve, we need to focus on our community and crosswalks and, um, and not bifurcating this area. You know, it's hard enough to cross Thorpe. Thorpe we don't need four lanes. Yeah. Like, no, take no. that off the... We, take we, it off we agree. <laughs> no one wants that. We, we agree um, 100%. Um, we absolutely need things that slow traffic down, making it yeah. the distance between I-25 and, and the next interchange is not as important to our community because we want to slow down those cars. Yeah. Um, we don't want congestion, but we also don't want the fastest path for the semis to get through our community um, yeah, thank you. No, thank you, thank you very, very much. Um, and, and just so, when we talked about access control in form of left turn base for vehicles, um, let's think one step further, right? That median, by default, it can become a pedestrian refuge, right? So you have to not to cross the two lanes in, in one stretch, but you cross one lane at the time, half the time for making sure, left, looking left and right, you know, so, so there's, there's so much more that we can, how we can enhance these concepts. But before we do that, we, we need to understand which concept are we working on. So thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Aida Rodriguez. Um, I don't live in, in the village of Doniana, but I live on the other side of I-25 off of Del Rey. I've lived there 40 some years. Um, I do have grandchildren, um, kids coming to Donian Elementary. I am the PTO president, so in the mornings, um, I drive these streets 20 times a day, back and forth, back and forth. I come from Delray to the fourth stop. Um, as you were talking about, you're taking um, counts of cars that are coming in. You do need to know now that there is a new cement place up in the area that we have CMIs in and out from 6.30 on. Mm -hmm. um, and we're not talking about little CMIs, we're talking about Concrete the big choice, ones, yeah. you know. They're destroying our streets now, <clears throat> going back and forth. I don't have a problem with, you know, the semi they have to make a living out there, but we need to figure out something from there on, like you're saying, because the traffic on from seven o'clock, it gets backed up. You hit under the overpass, you get to the um, the, right in front of the school area, that's where all traffic breaks up there. Mm -hmm. um, the turning lane is good, but when you have traffic coming, 
you have people from the Doniana school trying to get their kids to school. They're late. Um, everybody knows that, and we're trying to get there as soon as possible. We've got three different routes. We've got Elks, we've got the one coming to Camino Real, and we've got the cemetery one. Well, you can imagine everybody trying to get to the school. <laughs> it's not nice. Um, and I can tell you it's not nice because I've seen it many times. Many times. So that's where the problem is. Israel, um, thank you so much for getting our, our, our village together, what, whatever needs to be done with that right now. But my problem right now is getting from the, the actual off-ramp into the area mm -hmm. is where the problem is really bad in the mornings yes. when school ends and when 5 o'clock rush hits. Yeah. You know, other than that, the, the, the traffic isn't as bad when... It's not flowing, you know, time for people to leave. But that area is the worst area there. Um, the, the, where the Chachis and all those area, there is no turning lane. So if you're stopped, you're stopped mm -hmm. or you're in a wreck. Correct. You know, so that needs to be worked on there. As we were talking about the sidewalks, it, it, it's hard um, because you don't see people walking because we don't have crosswalks. Okay. They're scared. They're terrified. Sure. I'm terrified to hit somebody on the road mm -hmm. when they're trying to cross, you know? So you have four different routes that you're having to look from to see, okay, is there a pedestrian coming? Is there not, you know, the sunlight's hitting. When you're going down and you hit that one way on Thorpe, that's, right. that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, a, if a diesel's coming, you better move it over because that's it. I used to work right there on that. Um, where the old school is, mm -hmm. accidents there too. You know, it's, it's, that's another route that we need to watch right there. Um, you know, I thank you guys for what you're doing, um, but right that area, okay. it needs to be worked on, so. Well, thank you for your comments, okay. I appreciate that. And, and I think that's something that we've seen as a study team too, is that whole area from, the inner, from Del Rey all the way to Venegas really is, is really pretty congested. And so that's, that's why we were looking at some ways to improve that. Um, and just to kind of piggyback on some of these crosswalk um, conversations that you guys have, have brought up, um, any of these alternatives that we've looked at and presented to you guys, those, those are things that we can add to them. Um, uh, Andreas kind of mentioned that those medians provide that safe refuge in the, in the middle, for, so you don't have to cross the entire roadway. You can cross 12 or 16 feet. You could have 12 or 16 feet to kind of pause, catch your breath if you need to, get your bearings, and then you just look one way. And that's the big thing about those medians is that it gives you the opportunity to not have to play frogger, if you will, and look both ways and hope that you get a break in traffic both ways. So it would give you an opportunity to cross one way, stop, and then you could just have to look one direction and cross again. So um, thank you all for your comments. We have one right here, I'm sorry. Hi, my name is Andrea Fidalis Narvaez, uh, born and raised in Doniana, not going to leave, stuck. Um, I actually live on Thorpe. And just a suggestion or a thought, um, so Thorpe has been the main road for many years. And like she said before, it was a state road, we didn't have semis going. Have you guys also considered or the thought of maybe making an exit from I-25 to Taylor? Because Taylor is also like Thorpe that gets us to Valley. Just. So with, with interchange, our interstate interchanges, so there is a very specific federal process that needs to be followed to, to get warrant. And um, we're talking about even like the Doniana right now, we have near the interchange 8,000 vehicles a day. That maybe sounds a lot to us, if you look at it from a federal, from an interstate access point, it's really not. So we are looking as a second priority to help out with the Doniana interchange to build the ramps over at the Angler overpass. So we can split people coming from Taylor, hopefully not go north, north anymore to go to town, right? So we're trying to help that congestion with that. But even that proposal, we need to get um, approved by the federal government. You know, so there is a, it called an IACR, an interchange, um, interstate change, access change request. You know, and it, it, it's, it's actually quite an intensive study. But we have, we're really hoping 
you know, that we have enough data to, to prove the usefulness of, of adding that interchange. So looking into Taylor right now would be too close, too, too, not enough traffic. So, you know, and, and again, Taylor, Taylor again, it's, it's, it's not a state route system, right? It's, it's again, a county facility, you know, so. Yeah, no, no. So, but, but I, I, I see. But this is exactly how it works, right? People bring in ideas, and and we evaluating, and then we see, um, are there are there feasible? Are there implant? Can we implement them? Are there, you know, great ideas, but not yet? And just one more question. I know that it, you guys weren't doing the survey, but I would like to be involved. If there's a, maybe a roster or something, because I would like to be involved in, you know, if there's a survey going on. I'd like to give my input as well. We, so. did, we did it last year. Yeah, definitely. You're involved. You're here. All right, I am. So yeah. I want my name Say somewhere. Your, piece. <laughs> Whoever, your, your neighbor. Erlinda Garcia, do you have any uh, flood control planned uh, between Loman, or uh, is it I-70 I and Thorpe Road? So from, from the US-70 interchange to, to Doniana, we did notice that there is one spot where we've seen the, when, when it rains really hard, that water overtops the freeway. Mm -hmm. um, and that's done from some upstream changes in the flow path. And that is something that is part of our project for that stretch that we would look to improve. Um, it may be upstream changes to put the flow path back to where it was historically. We may try to oversize some culverts. Um, as we advance that further, we would we would fix that problem that I think you're referring to. I don't think there's to. very much flood control. Cur yes, that's that's true. I mean, there are between here and 70. Sh sure. So there's um, there's not a whole lot of flood control. There is some things that the city of Las Cruces own, and I think um, they're partners there's with counties. Yeah, so, so from a DOT's perspective, I don't think that's something we're really looking at. Um, we're making sure that we convey water under the roadway. We don't change historic drainage conditions at all. Um, but from a county or city perspective, they would be ones looking more at regional flood control um, for the area. If there's a commissioner has a question behind you. Good evening. My name is Rebecca Ramos, and I was here last week for a meeting with the county because they're going to be in, uh, putting in sidewalks. And I was just wondering, are you working with them in coordination with that? So our study, um, just like we shared with, with, with you as the public, we also have what we call stakeholder meetings. And the stakeholders on this project is EBID, because we have the outfall crossing Thorpe. We have the city of Las Cruces, because it includes the I-25 interstate, which goes, has a lot of impact on them. And we include the county of Doniana as a stakeholder. So yes, they're, they're fully aware of this and active uh, participating in finding solutions. Thank you. And also, I just wanted to say that I've witnessed on Thorpe, I, drive, I was driving behind a big rig that has run, run over dogs on Thorpe, and they just keep on going. You know, and I've witnessed that like five times, you know, over the last five years, and it's really sad that that we can't even have dogs on right there in the front yard without a truck running over them. So, hope, and I hope it would never be a child that that happens to. Thank you, Manuel Sanchez. I'm a Doniana County Commissioner for uh, this district, and I know I got on to the virtual session yesterday, and so I appreciate this being a hybrid session here with uh, the village. Um, and then actually, since I was late, I was able to actually keep track of the meeting while we were, uh, while, while I was away. So I really appreciate the, uh, the, the way you, you were able to involve people in person and remotely for this. Um, I, I just want to reiterate particularly a lot of the sentiments that uh, mentioned here, particularly around pedestrian safety and the walkability of uh, the community, because there's a, a couple of things that I've seen and heard for uh, since even since uh, when I took office uh, almost four years ago was wanting a crosswalk even through on Thorpe here in the in the community because um, 
it was discussed earlier, I think, by Mr. Chavez, that particularly on Ledesma, you have the the Cornicia there. You have the post office there. The bus stop for uh, the school drops off there, and then you have people that have to cro kids that have to cross the roadway to get to the houses on the north side of of Thorpe. So absolutely incorporating uh, a crosswalk there will be great. And I understand, like I said, this is still you are still early on with this study. Um, the other one is also needing pedestrian access, as we talked about, as you move the intersection by the gas stations, because there we still have the bus stop for the South Central Regional Transit District. So depending on what side you're on, people um, are gonna need to be able to access that bus stop and they don't really have access unless they run across the street. So um, I appreciate the sidewalks um, and possibly looking at having uh, the median in the middle that will provide some refuge. Uh, that, that helps, but definitely having some sidewalk or even a hawk system or something of that nature to uh, bring awareness to the drivers as they're going through the residential area in particular that people need to cross. Um, the other thing I know, the other uh, sentiment also is if there, you know, as we have ways in which to minimize the amount of speeding, I know that there's also a piece where law enforcement will have to help with that. But if there's ways in which you can engineer it into the design, that will be huge. Because as you mentioned, the first part of Thorpe is commercial. But, you know, they just haul, haul butt all the way down to Doniana Road. And then eventually after they stop there, they keep going. And so, again, with pedestrian safety in mind, uh, that's a big piece. And then the other one, again, is going to be, you know, how you incorporate sidewalks or even a multi-use path. One of the things that's been a big push for Donia has been to put, have either sidewalks or multi-use uh, paths. We see that right now on Elks, and that's what we were talking about, tying that in here to the village of Doniana. Um, and theoretically, you know, the next, theoretically, the next piece is going to be to connect from Columbia uh, Elementary on Elks, continue on to the city of Las Cruces. So then you will have a pathway from here in the village all the way to NMSU. So like I said, I think the big, if we can keep that in mind, again, around pedestrian, pedestrian safety, and uh, you know that's gonna be a big piece, crosswalks, sidewalks, um, and keeping in mind the infrastructure we have, because that's one of the things with Doniana County that we've asked of NMDOT has been, can we put these in and we needed the study. Now we have the study, then can we, this is one of the things that we want to ask for. So thank you all. Thank you, Commissioner. I appreciate your, your time again tonight. Um, just to kind of piggyback on some of that um, that you've talked about, we, we definitely want to incorporate, or we, we're glad to do this hybrid meeting. Um, one of the things as a study team, we recognize that this corridor separated from I-25 is significantly different. That this impacts you as a village a lot different than it impacts all of the users of I-25. And so that's why we're here tonight. We wanted to be here in person with you. We didn't want to have that disconnect of being virtual. We wanted to be able to be here so that we could meet with you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we could understand, we could see your passion because a lot of that gets lost um, through a, a virtual platform. And so um, we appreciate you guys attending and um, want to know that we're here to continue that dialogue with you. And this isn't the last time we're going to be here. We're going to continue to come back and we're going to continue to get that feedback from you. To, to be clear, there, there wasn't, when we talked to DOT the first time, there was no plan to have a public meeting in Doniana. We had to demand it. So let's not pretend that we didn't do a lot of advocacy for the last period of time, that there was, it wasn't a plan to do, they said they were going to have one public meeting in Crucis. So let's well, be, I, let, I wanna, let me finish. It's my turn. Um, I also want to talk about the dead end at, at, that you're going to, that you potentially will create at Joe Gutierrez. So it sounds like I heard from some folks that Joe Gutierrez won't be, in, in some of the plans, Joe Gutierrez may not be connected. Is that, is that what I understand? In some of the alternatives, it's not. Connected. So they did that once before, right? So Cristo Rey is a dead end and doesn't connect to Camino Real anymore. So. Connectivity is a high priority for the community. So creating more dead ends creates economic uh, dead ends. Right, exactly. And, you, and, 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 and folks in your position have done it before, right? Cristo Rey was 
Camino Real. It was the main street from Mexico City to Santa Fe. It's now a dead end, and they have a big sign there. And there's actually studies that say putting a big sign that says dead end on a road actually causes more crime, causes more uh, inactivity in ways that are detrimental to the community. So I want to be clear about any dead ends that you create should be accompanied with more than, it shouldn't be a dead end. There should, there should be no dead ends, especially for a historic road, which Joe Gutierrez, little known fact for, for, for probably you all, but some of the folks in here, that was First Street, right? That was the 1839 First Street. And so making that a dead end is not only uh, structural racism against a, a majority community of color, it, it, it demonstrates that you really are not looking at the connectivity of the community. You're just looking at how to get through us. And, and, and I want to be very clear that DOT told us when we had a community meeting that they were only going to do one meeting in Crucis. So pretending like this was always part of the plan is not consistent with what we've known. And, and, I, and, and, and I, just, I just don't want to be sold a bill of goods like you always intended to come talk to us. This has been a product of a lot of free labor on the behalf of our board members and our organization. And we're glad you're here. Be sure that you're prioritizing connectivity, pedestrian access, and, and I believe that the stakeholder meetings that you're having, I don't know why Renee's not here, because Renee said he was going to be here, remember? I am here. But Renee's not, and Renee said he was going to be here. And there doesn't seem to be a plan on DOT's part to connect the sidewalks that the county's building to this project. That should already be incorporated. You guys get paid to do this. None of us get paid. So you should come to the meeting more prepared and, and the conversation should have already happened. The county is building sidewalks, but there's no present plan to connect those sidewalks to this plan, right? So, a yes or no answer is fine. So that you have, exactly, you have not really understood the purpose of tonight. Um, but well, first of all, first of all I, I, I really want to appreciate your volunteer time and your enthusiasm and your thrive, because if, if, if your work got us here, thank you. Thank but you, thank you, thank time. you for pushing that, that I can be here tonight, you know, when we have this discussion. Again, what we are here tonight, we are identifying <coughs> concepts so that if we understand which concepts would fit the community best, we can go into the detailed discussion that you're asking for. You, you, we are in phase A, B. There's, we are at the but first step. My concern is, is that you're not going to, there's no room for public comment after this. No, there's absolutely. There's you're absolutely. Not, you're first, not first, statutorily first. required to have public comment after this, and I know you're not going to. Because that's how it always happens. So I'm an attorney. I've done this all before. I've seen you guys have public meetings. And then you say, yeah, 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 we're going to incorporate all this. And then you already know which plan you want. I really appreciate your input. And I don't think there's anything I can say today. The only, thing I, the only recommendation I can give right now is please look into the location study procedures. And you will see in phase 1C is when we come back where we incorporate all these comments received and have a public meeting to understand, did we understand it correct? Did we get the solution that it fits? You telling me I'm not doing this because you're an attorney, that, that is your opinion. And I, as I say, I really appreciate your effort to organize and be here and have this voice because it allows us to build a better project. It, it just seems inconsistent with the previous conversations where and we, we have folks a, said that there wasn't going to be a Doniana meeting. Because so right? that's, what, that's what DOT said. They were going to have one meeting in Crucis. Now you're saying we're going to have all the meetings. So I want to be real careful about what we're being sold. So again, what you say is right, if that makes you happy tonight. But I'm here tonight, right? We have a meeting. So what happened in the past, what happened in the past, we are here, we are communicating with you guys. So uh, we have a question behind you. Hi, I'm Isaac Garcia. I live on, uh, actually I grew up on Thorpe Road. Um, have you considered changing the uh, I-25 northbound uh, exit? Uh, have, can you push that out to possibly Del Rey? Because when, you're, when the, 
there's the four-way at Ben Archer, and, it, and you want to head west on Thorpe. If you're, if you're exiting, the cars in the morning, the lady here that works here, the timing of those cars at the four-way interrupts the timing of, of you trying to exit and go westbound on Thorpe Road. And that's when the, the exit ramp backs up. And it's real dangerous there because you have people heading east and west and you kind of have to take a risk. And then we all know the people that are turning right go in front of the people that are turning left, block your line of sight, and pretend that they, don't, that they didn't notice. That's uh, really frustrating. <laughs> um, have you considered pushing the exit further south and maybe having a roundabout on the eastern side of I-25? So I don't, I, we didn't look at that particular thing in, in, in detail. Um, we are going to do a, tra a traffic counts, which will do a signal warrant, which would put a traffic signal yeah. at that location, yeah, which would it, clear it up your, when you do your bottom. It, they fail, you said, when it, and there's a signal. A roundabout. Yeah. But if we were to leave the configuration of the northbound off-ramp and Delray, that four-way stop there, and put a signal at that intersection uh -huh. where the... The interchange is. Well, they tried to that put a stop sign there for a little bit, but it doesn't work. Yeah, <laughs> you guys remember that? <laughs> yeah, so that was a disaster. that's one of the things that we're we're still in the process of studying is yeah. is if we can justify a signal at that location to kind of clear up some of that congestion. Yeah, that that, that'd be helpful or okay. just something because the t it's just dangerous there. Sure. Yeah. And then I do want to point out our website. Um, we do have an interactive map on our website, so you guys can go there put a pinpoint on the exact location where you have a concern or a comment, you can kind of see a screenshot of what that is now. And we'll, we, we, this is the kind of input we want from you guys. We want to see those on there so that we understand. Yes, sir. This is probably not, maybe not your area. My name's Dale Anderson. I live on Barella and Thorpe. And if you had to guess, uh, how long do you think it would be before the construction equipment shows up to repair or change Thorpe Road? You're talking uh, the next 10 years, or? No, I mean, no, no, you, you, you're not. So the way this process works, the NMDOT has a process, we're initiating a study, and normally it is four years before we get to construction. Four years from? From, from so we are, we are now, we are, we are within, the first year, right? Okay. So it would be three years, but even then, the prioritization, uh, we cannot build I-25, oh, Angler Interchange, and Thorpe Road it again. So what we're gonna look at, we're probably gonna, out of these comments and the needs, and coordinating with our partners, with the county, you know, we, we're gonna probably do tier implementation of what is a tier one, what needs to happen today? Oh, it what seems can, like the ramps you know, at Elks are probably in front of anything that would happen on Thorpe. That, that is current, gonna, yes sir. If you were gonna soften a blow to Thorpe, you'd have no. the ramps at Elks. So there, there's two different things that, that we have to look into, right? There, there's two different type of funding sources. We as a DOT, we can spend federal funding within the NMDOT right away. So all the, these outside ideas that we have, the relocation of the interchange, you know, we would be outside our right away, so we can not use that type of money to pay for it. So that means we have to go in front of legislative, state legislative, and get a house bill approved. So now we're talking politics involved. You know, we are competing against everybody else to find the funding. That's why it's so important that we have commissioners, we have our senators, we have everybody involved in understanding how important this to us. You know, then we can work with the county. The county, there is capital outlay projects where can, we can send applications. So to answer your question, we may be laughing about 10 years, but in my life, I work, 10 years is almost, that, that's not tomorrow, but the day after. Okay. You know, to, to be, that, that was my question. I yes, a, sir. I have, a 20, I have an easement that goes through my living room. And uh, I probably don't have to worry about that because yeah. no, no. But but um, that's I, that's how transparent I can back be. Door, sir, door feet first before this takes place. Yeah. So I, I, that's okay. I I'm good. And then, sir, did you state your name? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you.
Hi, I'm Susan Richardson. Hi, Andreas. Um, Israel is correct. When we were here on the meeting on the 16th, Rene Molina said he was going to be here. And I was watching it online, and I had to come down here because there was no way for me to make a comment online to that fact that it burns the heck out of me that he is not here. Okay? Another thing is, um, as you know, our group has been working to get things, infrastructural changes around here that we really needed. So I'm happy to finally see it after all these years. And I'm hoping from what I heard from last night's meeting is that the, um, <clears throat> what's happening um, uh, at the overpass at Spruce is going to alleviate a lot of the traffic that comes out to the Doniana exit because a lot of the residents on Del, uh, Del Rey and also um, Elks, they have to come out to, to exit nine and then they have to go back to Taylor Road, Blymeyer, and, and, you know, Sand Hill off of De, uh, Del Rey. And so I'm hoping that that set portion alleviates some of the backup traffic that happens on our exit. The other thing is I've heard a lot this evening about, <clears throat> and the latest plan does not show this. We have a, and you've heard it many, many times, but we have a lot of walkers. We also have a lot of bikers. And in the latest plan, the last plan that you are advocating, there isn't a bike lane. There isn't a multi-purpose use. I don't, We've heard a lot about crosswalks. Well, in those crosswalks, I don't want to see the signals with the hands, the red and white ones. I would like to see what is over at the university where there's actually lights that indicate someone is crossing because traffic will not stop. And the reason that the university finally put those in is because so many people were getting run over by cars trying to cross the university. In fact, I was in a parking lot and I watched one guy get hit by a car. He flew up and went smack dab on the pavement right there at Jordan and University. And it took them two hours to get him into the ambulance because every time they moved him, he had broken every single bone in his body. Okay? I would, instead of just having the signals with the, the red and white signals, I would like to see the, the signals that the university has that actually indicate to motorists, hey, there is somebody who wants to be in here, whether it's a wheelchair, a kid, or just somebody trying to cross from one side of the road to the other. Just having a crosswalk is not going to slow people down. The other thing is uh, with the roundabouts, um, I know a lot of people say they're safer, but every roundabout that is in the city, Maine, University, and there's one over in Sonoma Ranch. <clears throat> a lot of people don't know how to use them. And also, with the space confinements, I don't see how a huge truck, like a semi, is going to maneuver around a roundabout in this section. And there are, there are, there, there are, uh, there are a lot of semi trucks that go through here, okay? But I'm, I'm worried about, because of the space restrictions, and it's been noted lots of times in various presentations, that these trucks are still not going to have enough space to maneuver around the roundabouts. And people don't know how to use them. And so I would like to see something come, an alternative to, to the roundabout versus a four-way stop or even signals. Could you investigate? as to what else we could do that would better provide people slowing down but not having that much difficulty getting through. Thank, thank you very much, Susan, for your comments. Oh, Hi. Uh, oh and, and oh. just for clarification um, for our listener online, um, the angler interchange, not the spruce interchange, is what we were looking at to move some traffic further south so it relieves the And I, I do want to mention that Mo Mohammed from the city of, or from the county is here. He's actually um, Renee's boss, so you got one step up. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, well, I probably don't need a microphone because I work with kids, so I yell or talk fairly loudly. Um, my name is Stephanie. I'm uh, with Parks and Rec. Well, I used to work with Parks and Rec, and so I love to hear that these kind of meetings happen because this is what we used to do all the time when we wanted new things. But I wouldn't be doing my kids any justice um, here at Doniana because I have a program that happens here. I'm born and raised here. I grew up in the trailer park, so when you guys talk about walking and all these great things. Yeah, we used to be able to do that kind of stuff, but it doesn't happen now. Um, I have a small group of 10 kids here, but they're amazing. Um, and we actually did walk them, wanted to walk over to the village, but we couldn't even get there from here to there because of the roads, obviously. So I'm having to bring a van for 10 kids to get them to like right there, you know, walking distance. So we're trying to promote the walking, health, fitness, all those kind of things. But we can't do it if we're not safe, if we don't have that. The other thing that's another um, important part of what we're doing is transportation. Um, you know, how do we get around other than just our vehicles? You know, Selena brought up a very good point. Not everybody has a car, you know, and if buses could get through there, you put your bike on there, you can get to your jobs, all those kind of things. But it's keeping that kind of focus on not just the transportation and those kind of things, but your health, your fitness, your walking around staying connected to your families, especially here, that's huge to be able to. I mean, I can tell you, we used to go to catechism and run across the street, go play with our friends, back to the trailer park, and you could do this, you know, freely without worrying about getting run over. Um, and that's something that, you know, like I said, I wouldn't, do my, wouldn't be doing my kids any justice if I didn't come tonight and say that that's something that's important, you know. We preach to them, oh, be healthy, walk, ride your bike, do this and that, where do I do it? You know what I'm saying? It's like I'm telling them and encouraging them, but there's nowhere for them to do it. So, you know, that's those kind of things. And I know you've heard it plenty of times tonight, but it's just reinforcing the importance of why we need to keep the village the village. I mean, we're growing and it's what happens. You know, people have kids and grandparents and that's what happens, but we can't lose what we have here as part of, you know, the community and what's going on. But we want to make it beautiful. We want to have sidewalks and multi-place, you know, areas for them to play and do those kind of things. But you know, we kind of have to push the envelope a little bit because that's what, like Israel was saying, it stops. I've, I've seen it with the city plenty of times. We talk, 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 we have these great meetings and then you never see it happen again. And then all of a sudden, oh, let's have another meeting about that one thing back then 10 years ago. So I just wanted to reiterate how important it is for these meetings, but at the same time for us to keep, you can't just say it and important, you know, these things and then just not come back and revisit it and those kind of conversations that we have to have. And if we want it to grow and be healthier, safer communities, we have to have these different options for our families. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Um, I, I want to, and I want to bring it back. And again, and I really appreciate what the villages does. You know, but also I want everybody also remember we're talking about one corridor. New Mexico 320, walking paths, bicycle paths, you know, wh why, why do we want to bring all these activities and facilities right next to the most dangerous part we have within the village? Why don't we not use or try to think to build out our local street network to make it attractive to do these things? You see, that, that, that's what we're getting at, you know, so we... We don't need to be lectured on yeah. Okay. The county is doing sidewalks all throughout. We're working with the flood commission to develop an open space south of the village where the state government let a state road decay, right? There used to be a state road into the village. We're working on all those things. You don't have to stress about that. What you need to stress about is taking this input and incorporating it. And yes, what we want is walkability next to this, what, what, what did you call it? A dangerous road? That's, that's what we're talking about. A dangerous road. I just no. get that to the So let's be clear. You, you don't have to stress about how dangerous Thorpe is because we live along it. Just focus on making it safer for pedestrian infrastructure. And again, thank, thank you very much. You called it dangerous, not me. So we, we do have a comment online from Senator Steinborn. So. Um, if, if somebody, uh, Joey, if you could unmute him, I would appreciate that. Okay, great. Thank you again for having the meeting in Doniana and thanks to everyone who took the time to come out. I really appreciate it. And I am uh, calling in from Santa Fe from my office up here. Uh, so sorry, I couldn't be with everyone in person. And I just kind of want to reinforce, I mean, how where the AB study in Doniana came from, which was really out of 
community concerns about safety along Thorpe Road and uh, kind of that congestion of issues uh, closer to the interstate. And so kind of tying together what everyone said, I think solutions that A, deal with the safety, but B, also enhance the quality of life, walkability, um, aesthetics of this historic village are all important uh, values to me. And I know from what I've learned from a lot of the residents that um, will be really important as opposed to more of a thoroughfare, um, which would kind of run kind of counter to those values. But with safety being paramount, obviously, at the top of that list. So unfortunately, I, I got out of a committee meeting late, so I didn't hear the beginning of the meeting to see your proposals, but I look forward to going back at the recording. Hopefully I can access that so I can see what you guys have proposed. But knowing that it's a dynamic process, I mean, I'm sure you heard everyone loud and clear tonight, and um, you know, you'll take that back and and if need be, kind of tweak some of these ideas to to come back with something that you know will will um, blend all these all this feedback. And just appreciate the opportunity and appreciate that you all included Doniana in the AB study, which wasn't originally the plan, um, but. Uh, but I mean, you know, that's part of you being responsive. So we appreciate that uh, the former secretary agreed to do that and that it's we're now able to to work on a proposal that will work good for the village. And as you said, you know, these proposals end up winding their way into legislation and funding here in Santa Fe. And so kind of one thing we stressed at the meeting last night was that this project in Thorpe Road in the village of Doniana be kind of put on a parallel I'll be at a different path because uh, the projects are different from I-25 Loman coming down to this interchange. So, um, so anyway, look forward to seeing the plan and working, working to get something positive for the village. So thank you guys. Thank you, Senator Steinborn for attending and taking time. We appreciate that. <clears throat> so we do, We do have a couple of comments online that I want to address. Um, so Kyle Davis has asked a couple of questions. He asked if Elks and El Camino gets realigned to Ledesma, how would that intersection not just plug up with traffic like it does where it currently is? And I think the answer to that is um, at that location, you were competing with several things. We're competing with the interstate on and off ramps, which has a high volume of traffic. We're competing with the gas stations. And so by creating that separation, you just give more room. Um, I think some of you guys mentioned that in the mornings, that left turn really backs up. And so what we're trying to do is just create that space for more of that left turn movement. And then as also his other question was, uh, or is more of a comment, moving the intersection to Ledesma will increase the time it takes for the fire, par fire department to get to Thorpe. Has that been taken into account? Um, we haven't looked at that specifically as what a, a change in travel time would be, um, but it would be pretty minor, I would think, um, by moving it a few hundred feet to the to the to the east to the west. Excuse me. So, um, I think that's all of the questions that we have online and all the hands we have raised. Do you have another question or comment, ma'am? And that is. My hat's off to the Donia and um, Village Association because my group has been trying to work with the county and flood control and various other uh, uh, New Mexico DOT since the early 2000s, okay? And um, not, to make a long story short, I only want, want to say my hats off to them because in the short period of time they were incorporated in 2021 they have been able to do something that my group the North Valley Neighborhood Association hasn't been able to do and so I'm glad we're having these meetings finally um, um, because I, I got exhausted um, trying to coordinate and talk with and and you know my my group of my main core group of four um so i'm glad that they have been able to do this i'm hoping 
that we can continue to do this because my group isn't only um, um, I'm concerned about what's happening in the Mira Solo states and Taylor and Elks and El Camino Real. We're also, the surrounding um, areas surrounding us, we're interested in, and we have been, and um, since the pandemic, we have, 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 have um, with Melina and Mr. Sanchez, um, We've been taken, been taken out of the loop, and I'm trying to get us back in because we are concerned and have been for many, many years about the flooding issues and the neighborhoods and the people, not just our little sec sector of Dona Ana, but what surrounds us. And we have been very interested, and I hope this continues, and I hope you don't take anything that, that anyone has said as a slight towards this process, I don't want it to end, okay? I, I, I was so ecstatic on the 16th and last night's meeting and this meeting that the changes that we have been, been trying for, the county is, and, and, and trying to, to work with people, um, and hopefully we can get the funding in order to do this because people in this area have been neglected for so many years and we we are taxpayers and we need to be we need um to be addressed and and valued and considered like any other person in the city and any person um, throughout the the rest of the county so thank you very much for doing this How will we know about it? Yeah, that was my question. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> so we, we don't have a formal meeting established at this point, but if you guys left us your contact information when you signed in, we will send emails out to everybody making sure that you're aware of when any future meetings are planned. And then I would also encourage everybody to go to our website, i25nm.com, and leave us a comment there. Um, click on the map and leave a specific location that you say, hey, this point right here is a problem. Um, we're gonna look at all of those things. We're gonna get that information. Um, our formal comment period for the study and for this public meeting ends on March 23rd, but our website's gonna still be up. We're still gonna be checking that email address. We're still gonna be taking those things. So, so don't think that it's just gonna stop here. Um, I don't know where the process is going to go from here. I don't know, as Andrea says, it's going to take years to get all of this developed, but we're so, not done. So I'm currently in the process of trying to secure the funding so I can keep paying the engineers to, to move forward into phase C. And currently our plan is to have that phase C, the environmental, social, economic study, um, to be completed over the summer. So um, I would assume we're going to keep it outside the summer break so we're going to make sure hopefully right after summer break when people are back and not on vacation so we can reach everybody does this answer your question So that, that would be an, uh, after the summer break. Yes. All right. We, we have the mic here. It, it's right over here. Um, so at, at this point, we really want to thank you. You know, and like I said, this is, this is the first step you know, where we're coming into you. And, and I think today was very helpful to us. You know, because that, that's exactly what we're after. We want to make sure we're building the right type of infrastructure for the community, not what just the green, we have a green book that is the guideline how to build roads, right? I mean, that, that, that counts for everywhere, from Alaska down to New Mexico. That doesn't mean it meets Doniana, right? So I, I really want to thank you all. I want to thank our commissioner. I want to thank our professional staff. But I really want to thank you guys as members of the community to be here tonight, you know, and help us you know, trying to build the best project that we can. 
All right. And thanks again. Thank you. I just want to echo that. And everybody that was online again, thank you for that. Um, if you guys want to go back and re-watch any of this, we will post this meeting on our website, i25nm.com. So give it a few days and then that'll be up and you guys can go back and look at it. All of this, yeah, and share it with people in your neighborhood and that may not have been able to be here. And all of this information is up there as well. So thank you and, and good night. Thank you, everybody.